Okay, I hope that works. I'll try that. Drew, if you're talking, I can't hear you. I'm not talking yet. Okay. Hello, hello, by the way. Welcome in. Welcome in. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Mm, gotta stretch. Gotta stretch. <laughs> Those first two weeks back to working out really are uh rough. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Gimme gummy, welcome really, in. Welcome in lizard. Really do a number on you. Sorry, go ahead. Uh they really do a number on you, that's all. Yep. Yep, 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 Hey chat, good to see you guys. Get the cards out of the way here. I feel like it's just Dang it. There's crap everywhere. Got popsicle sticks and dice. <laughs> just, everything is all over the place. This is not the right pen. Uh oh. What if we did one of those? Oh, I understand. What? I'm drawing on the background there. Oh no! Uh -huh. <laughs> I can fix this. It might bog out for a second. There we go. No worries. Lock that layer. There we go. Viewer suggestions how it's fun with art. Yeah. Yeah, you're very welcome to. Uh, basically, just a one sentence character suggestion for a tabletop uh, character, and yeah. We, we put on a list, we roll the dice, the dice gods decide which ones to draw. Yeah. So you're very welcome to suggest one if you want in chat. If not, that's also fine. <laughs> well, I was going to say this... I should do a, like a stream of conscious rugby where I have to just never pick up the pencil. <laughs> rugby automatic drawing challenge win? Mm -hmm. Oh, I picked it up. That's it. That's all we get. That's all we get of a rugby drawing. <laughs> Are you allowed to retrace your lines? Depends on... <laughs> uh, it, it honestly just depends on the rules that you set for yourself. Man, I should do some more automatic drawing. It was a really good exercise to help me not super freaking stressed out about my art, which is super what I'm doing lately. Yeah. Got to be loosey-goosey. Yep. Loosey-goosey. Constantly remind myself that it's all made up and none of it matters. Yep. Catbug. It's like trying to make oatmeal cry. Why would you do that? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna miss Rooster Teeth. They didn't do Rooster Teeth, did they? I mean, that wasn't Rooster Teeth, was it? Well, isn't it? I thought it was I, no, I thought it was Rooster Teeth before before Rooster Teeth was a thing. Oh no no no! Rooster Teeth is way old. Oh, maybe maybe they were bought by Rooster Teeth. I don't remember. Maybe. I thought they were related in some way. Maybe I'm just. We talked about this the other day. Yeah, hold on. Yeah yeah we did. We talked about it Friday.
Because I think being like Rooster Teeth did be in Puppycat, right? But the pilot was made by the same people who did Bravest Warriors, yeah. I thought. Um No, so Bravest Warrior uh writer was behind B and Puppy Cat. Um Apparently Apparently some of the voice actors for Bravest Warriors were from the Rooster Teeth cast. Oh, okay. They were working together okay. on a game. Uh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Hope the stream's going well. So far, so good, Dragon Turtle. How are you today? Do, 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 do. Should we uh, impose an art challenge on ourselves today? Or is that too much I'm, Too much work? I don't know. I've, I'm already working under a resolution to, um, to not take more than 30 minutes per drawing. So Okay. Should we put a timer on it? Um, we can, if we, we can if you want. I'm keep, kind of keeping track of it, of it myself. Oh my god! I also don't want to stress myself out too much, so it's. I had kind of planned to just be like, uh, whenever I notice I've gone past thirty minutes, that's it. I, gotta okay. stop. I just realized but, uh, I could give rugby little like cat lips. And that's it's really funny. That is very funny. So, I am I am willing to to up the ante though if you if you want to do a if you've got a, a more strict challenge in mind. Uh, not really. I was thinking like so. Magma Studio is finally kicking out Aggie, which is yep. why all the brushes and stuff are weird. Um, that's why I was gonna say maybe I just stick with this brush today and like try to do really high value stuff. Um, high contrast stuff. But I kind of hate it. I might just try to figure out my pen. <laughs> Sounds good. That is a much more scrungly rugby than you usually end up with. Right. <laughs> Jester Warlock crying comedy mask with arms and legs bandages. That'll work. I'll put it on the list for you. A blind bard. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, why didn't that work? Because why does it do that? Okay. Do 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 do. Bonk 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 bonk. I think we got to make this rugby like ghost rugby. Have come for your soul. I am the rugby who comes and takes things. <laughs> Give me your shiny clicky clacks. <laughs> <clears throat> All that is glitter is rugby's. Elliot, hello, hello. It's my birthday and a Vernal Equinox. Moblin Rider. All right, fair enough. That's a good way to start. Happy Thank birthday. you, Elliot, by the way. Happy yeah. birthday. This episode brought to you by Elliot. I will turn off. Turn off the ads. Woo! Ad free. Here we go. Happy birthday. Okay. Uh, a Moblin Rider, huh? We can just start with that. Let's just start with that. It's a good transition. Yeah. Let's fix this pen real quick, though. I don't know. I want this to be a little bit softer. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. 
It's allergy season. Yep. Pain in the butt. I'm actually doing pretty okay with it. Mm -hmm. So far. That's good. Like two or three days ago, our car was completely covered in tree chiz. <laughs> Which made me a little well, upset. because you're in the Pacific Northwest and you yeah. just got basically the, half the world's population of pine trees. What art program are you drawing with? Uh, we are using Magma Studio. Yep, there's a there's a free online version. It basically, it yeah it used to be Aggie.io, so it's a browser based thing. It's not exactly the most robust drawing tool I've ever used, but it works, and you can draw with friends. That's a rugby. It's not a goblin nose. What would a goblin be riding? Goblin dog? Yeah. I mean, that's that's the obvious answer, right? Mm hmm you But, like uh, I, I like, yeah, I like Warthog. I like Fay Badger. Fay Badger I would like, be pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> There's, YouTube is driving me crazy, but it's fine. Like, I'm not mad at it. Because uh, I like, I've been looking at like how to make bandoliers and stuff. Uh -huh. Just as like a weird side project. And uh, so I'm learning like leather crafting. And because of that, it's like perpetuated a ton of like gun YouTube where it's just like, look at all these guns. It's like, that's great. I like that. That's fine. And then it's like, watch these people hunt boars. And I'm like, I don't want this. This is not the content I want. <laughs> um,. But a good thing that came out of that is, like, this guy found, like, a baby wild boar, and he picked it up. I'm like, that's a bad idea. Don't pick that up. And he's just like, oh, it's cute. It's, like, all angry and pissed off and stuff. And he sets it down, and it takes, like, two steps, and then turns around and just charges him. <laughs> and it's, like, a perfectly cut scream of this, like, tiny, tiny baby pig <laughs> that's just like, I'm going to fuck up your day. <laughs> they are aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They are aggressive. you see pig pig in wild leave pig alone i yeah i don't know i i have never found pigs particularly cute not even the teacup pigs that everybody oohs about you didn't watch babe as a child I Charlotte's did, Web? But I, yeah but like i still didn't i can empathize with them without thinking they're adorable hmm I don't know. I don't. I don't care for their body plans. Kind of the same way I don't like sloths. A lot of people think sloths are very cute. I think they are gross and ugly. Well, you just pissed off the internet, so you're on. Well, your that's fine. My friends growing up had uh, had a pig, pigs like they raised pigs. Mm -hmm. You're big, big and scary. Yep. Well, the, the pigs you raise for bacon are, are like, they get, ugh. Ugh. They get real big. Yeah. Was it, I think, Texas, there was a, uh, a hog, like a domesticated hog that had gotten out, um, and gone feral, and it ended up being about the size of a, of a fully loaded minivan. There was something about, like, it only takes, like, two or three generations for pigs to kind of, like, regress to boars, which is really strange. Yeah, yeah. James Wilkerman. They go for real fast. They yeah. go for real fast, yeah. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Razorbacks are terrifying, yeah. Yeah. Is that supposed to be a bug man? I think I think Druid is drawing a moth. A moth man. Yep. I'm drawing a tiny goblin riding a pig. And 
as it is Elliot's birthday, and Elliot wanted a uh, goblin rider. Is what we're doing. I feel like he needs a beard. He needs like a little beard or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe a mustache. I was going to give him a big old, like, headdress. But maybe I'll give him a cowboy hat. That's pretty funny. I mean, if, if you want to commit to trying to draw that shape, sure. Uh, I hate drawing cowboy hats. They're a pain in the butt. So rugby on a pig. I mean, I mean rugby's, rugby can't ride things very well because his arms aren't accessible. <laughs> He's got to, like, grip onto him with his toes. <laughs> Careful, now you're feeding the, the fetish side of YouTube. Yeah, if people want to pay me to draw rugby feet, I'll draw rugby feet. <laughs> You hear it. You heard it here first. Go, uh, goblin foot fetish missions now open. <laughs> you know, as things go, that would be that'd be on the tamer side of things. So I'm okay with that. <laughs> That's true. If that's what I ought to make my money with. I will. I will do that. I think. I think that's probably why people rag on the foot fetishists and the furries so much. Is that. In the grand scheme of things, it's it's relatively tame. Yeah, that's true. No king shaming. Just gentle ribbing. I respect whatever you're into as long as whatever you're into is consensual. Yeah. One of my friends messaged me and he was... We were talking about he was talking about like uh, his beard, about how his beard is getting unnecessarily long, and he looks mm -hmm. like a caveman. I'm like, you just gotta, you just gotta accept your new life now. Um, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I'll go buy like a fedora and just start walking. <laughs> like oh. he's like, I don't need to, I don't need to rag on people like that. I'm like, no, it's fine. Like the joking is, is fine, because I don't think, I don't think people that like, I think people that kind of buy into a, a genre like goths or. Or, yeah, yeah. Like, like they're kind of in on the joke. Like, yeah. No one is uh, absolutely. No one puts but, on a fedora and thinks like, "I look so damn sharp right now." Like, I hope maybe yeah. not. Maybe there are people like that. <laughs> like, I'm I'm pretty sure that the, the the basic idea of hipsters in general, who are the ones most likely to to adopt the fedora look, mm -hmm. um, is that it all just is a joke. Like it's it's a historical joke and pointing out that that modern culture sucks. That could be. So, Cause like, I don't know. I could be off base on that. The only people I really knew in high school before fedoras were really annoying that wore them mm -hmm. were all the people in jazz band. And yeah. they, <laughs> they secretly thought they looked really cool. And it's just yeah. like, yep. And I think I think those are the people that got made fun of and now people wear fedoras because of it. That's but. that's kind of fair, but also I'm kind of with them, like old jazz Rat Pack with the fedora. You disgust kind of me. It's pretty sharp. <laughs> you disgust me. No, like you you gotta <laughs> style it right. It's if it's if it's the fedora and a t-shirt, then that's gross. But I would 100. If, you, if you've got the suit that matches. Yeah, like Adam Savage pulls it off, right? Like yeah, Adam Savage. Oh, 100. percent And I when I was in high school, I would have just like I would have killed to look like Adam Savage. It would have been great. Like, but I couldn't afford the leather jacket, and it was weird to walk around with a whip. So, I never did it. <laughs> you lived in Idaho. You could have gotten away with it. Oh, I, yeah, I could have. Absolutely. I don't know what happened to my whip. I think it fell apart. Oh, sad. Did you uh, make it yourself? No. That's probably why no. it fell apart. <laughs> uh, probably. You, you're totally the sort of person that I can imagine pulling an Adam Savage and, like, learning how to make your own whip. I thought about it. I have a lot of leather sitting next to me right now. A few years ago, I made uh, made a bunch of the Patreon members dice bags. Mm -hmm. Leather dice bags. And after that, I was like, man, I want to do more leather crafting, but I just don't have the stuff for it. And for my birthday, I bought it all, so now I can. <laughs> now I can't do it. 
So part of the problem, I think, is that people are losing the ability to tell jokes. Sarcasm, metaphors, and the serious part, or something that's in fiction from what someone endorses. That's interesting. I saw a thing. Um, I don't know if it was Joe Rogan or... I think it was on the Joe Rogan podcast. I saw a clip from someone talking about that, about just like... And Ricky Gervais has also talked on this as well. It's like when you're telling a joke, you are an actor... And so what you're saying doesn't necessarily espouse to who you are as a person because it's a joke. Just like yeah, yeah. the way actors play a character, they're not actually that character. And so it's like, that's, I, I can definitely see that. Um, and I think that's probably spawned more from social media where like people are selling themselves. So like nowadays, yeah. you're not selling a joke. You're selling that you're a comedian. And so those two things are kind of intrinsically linked now. And maybe that's something that shouldn't be. Um, that being said though, like I grew up, I grew up in Southern Idaho. And so like lots of just bad racist misogynistic jokes. And as I've gotten older, um, they hit me different. <laughs> yeah. If that makes sense. Yep. And so no, I'm right there with you. Uh, yeah. So, so I don't know. I'm kind of on, I'm kind of of two, two minds about that because I can, I can understand like a well-crafted joke. And I think some of those yeah. are really funny. Um, but, uh, it, I've, a few times in my life, I've like, I've had very good friends make kind of like risque, uh, misogynistic jokes. And I'm just, I'm just, I have to stop and be like, you know, it's just not funny. I'm like, I just, I don't find that funny anymore. And the racism. Yeah. Like the racist jokes, like they just, a lot of them aren't funny, but like, um, uh, yeah, our our generation, like we we've lived long enough that boomer humor is no longer like funny, to us, right. right? And and there's a, there's a I think there is a a line there that can be drawn because like um, I'm trying to think of the like Def Comedy Jam is a lot of um, it's not racist jokes, but it's race based ju comedy. Yeah, and yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, and so, and like, and that's kind of one of the reasons that a lot of people like Joe Rogan is that he's able to, he's able to craft jokes that are very tongue in cheek, and for the most part, he doesn't go over the line. Whereas like Dave Chappelle has yeah. said some things that have like pissed some people off, but it's like, did Dave Chappelle actually go over a line, or was the joke a joke? And so I think I think that's kind of the transition of where things are getting to the point where people can't tell anymore. And that's where it gets really, really dangerous. Because it's like, yeah. is this person espousing a belief or a, a, a um, trying to sell a narrative? Or are they trying to tell a joke that is something that people can uh, relate to? Yeah. And I think yeah. something else that kind of feeds into the problem is that... Mm, so much of current comedy is extremely political. Yeah. Uh, and so That's people fair. kind of inherently want to take comedy more seriously now because it it, it, it feels like everything is satire or is, or is supposed to be satire sure. now. Yep. Um, so I don't know. That That's kind of just my, yeah. my best guess, though. Yeah, comedy's in a weird place. Comedy's in a weird comedy's place. Comedy's in a weird place. Um, um, I... My rule of thumb has always been uh, if it's at the expense of somebody, it's not really funny. Yeah. Um, and and, and the, the more um, like historically oppressed the, the person or group you're making fun of, the less funny it is. Yeah, we can see that. A joke making fun of racism versus relying on racist perspectives to be funny. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it, Dragon Turtle. I think that's I think that's yeah. a great way. To, stereotypes make for easy jokes, especially for sketch comedy. Yeah, stereotyping is because it's it's uh, highly relatable. I think like stereotypes are stereotypes because so many people have the same belief yeah, that yeah. you can easily make jokes that people understand. Where if you make something that's very like subtle or. Um, uh, I was going to say minute, but like fine tune. Not as many people will get it. And so, yeah, stereotypes and, and like those kind of jokes are just like the low hanging fruit. So, which is why it's just it's not great. But, 
my yeah my uh i think the the thing that gave me the best perspective on comedy is i believe this is attributed to tina fey but uh the uh she said that the comedians in general their sense of humor humors are so crazily warped that sometimes it's it's kind of hard for them to tell where to draw the line okay. and the example the example she gives is um uh and like it this is not really an excuse but the, the example she gives is like if you take an snl skit um and you if you want to make the your audience laugh a surefire way to do it is to take the biggest, buffest, most muscly, like Dwayne the Rock Johnson, Henry Cavill type celebrity, uh, dress him up like an old lady, and have somebody push him down the stairs. You want to make a room full of comedians. <laughs> if you want to make a room full of comedians laugh, you take an actual oh, old ninety-year-old woman and shove her down the stairs. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I get it. Uh, I get that. So, yeah. So. And anyway, like that, it doesn't really mean anything. It's just helped me to be a lot more comfortable with being like, okay, so this person is a comedian making a joke towards an audience. This is not necessarily what they believe. Um, yeah. It is, it is crafted to get a laugh out of the audience. There's uh, what to. was it? Who, who's the? Who's a bald said, comedian? Kind of a piece of shit. Yeah, like Roseanne did a lot of of uh, like eighties, eighties and nineties. Uh, situational comedy so like people yeah. people understood her she's also kind of a shitty person <laughs> so it's like those two things are very are different um yeah. a lot of, like my parents didn't like her but like Damn. but also like didn't like her because there was a little like holding up a mirror right it was just like mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah all right let's draw some stuff let's draw some more stuff here we go yep yep we're past the half hour mark on this, so I gotta, I gotta stop. Sure. That's okay. Think about how critics get to anti-trope and demanding for originality because they've been, they've seen thousands. Oh yeah, like desensitized that you're talking about. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah com comedians like really need just, they see the world differently. 18. Lokatha, who looks like an electric eel with a pike, but is a Storm Herald barbarian. Do, 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 do. Cool. When you got all that set, uh, I'm ready to roll two. Go for it. Roll me a d30. D30? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is the d10? Uh, ooh. Four. Four. <laughs> a tuba theme warforged paladin. Tuba themed yeah. warforged. Paladin. This is based okay. off those tuba themed boss fights, which is like a dude wearing tubas. I had to look that up earlier because I was like, is that, is that just meme? Is that like a meme, uh, fan thing? But it's funny enough. Seem, yeah, seems kind of like it. But okay. At some point, I was in marching band. I can I can build a sousaphone. I was gonna say, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say <laughs> at some point in time in every uh, every marching band, somebody puts a tuba on their head, and that's essentially what it is. So. Yep. Uh, how do we know if it's too complicated? Was really worried about that when I posted mine. Uh, it should be one sentence. If it is longer than one sentence, it's too complicated. <clears throat> longer than one sentence and has more than six commas. Yeah. It's too long. Okay, eels. What do eels look like? Um, penises. <laughs> penises with teeth? Penises with teeth. Tiny it, it, eyes. it does actually depend on the eel. Uh, wolf eels look gnarly, or wolf-headed eels look gnarly. They also don't look anything like wolves. They almost don't look like eels. Yeah. They remind me a lot of the um, the two-headed Hydra from the Willow movie. Honestly. Yeah. Yep. Oh, electric eels are just smooth, flat peen noodles. All right. Yeah, but they're also not actually eels. They're lungfish. They look really boring. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Like They, yeah. They don't, they, got, they don't got a lot of, uh, that's it. 
That's an uninteresting silhouette. <laughs> I'll have to think about this a little bit. Do people not learn about run-on sentences anymore? <laughs> I would be surprised if they didn't, but whether or not people actually absorb what they learn in their English classes is entirely mm. up for debate. I would say keep it to one tweet, but one tweet is almost too long, you know? Yeah. Considering how much of online um, communication is text-based, I uh, based I have found it extremely weird, honestly. That um, that it's not more that uh, people aren't getting more literate; they're <laughs> they're getting less. Have you ever read? There's a there's a YouTube video a long time ago about someone reading the like, "Am I pregnant?" Uh, it might have been Z Frank, honestly, reading the Reddit page for <laughs> like the the Am I Pregnant Reddit page. I no idea. Am I pregnant? <laughs> oh, maybe I did. <laughs> yep. Okay, I think uh, uh, yeah. Some of that might also be toward about people relying too much on like autocorrect and uh, autofill text. I think that's what it is. I mean, that, that's where I was getting at. Was like. We've had the God, internet for, uh, what, fully access to the internet for 30 years now? Yep. So that's an entire generation of people that have never never been in a world without the internet. So, uh, is a YouTube live stream comment comparable in length? Uh, you can get a lot in the YouTube content. I don't know what the actual length is of them. Yeah. But, uh. I can I can get um, if I'm concise enough I can get a whole paragraph in there. <laughs> yeah. So that's too long. One sentence. One sentence, Dragon Turtle. Subject. Descriptor. Maybe a verb, and an adverb, and then a color, <laughs> which I think is actually an adjective. An adjective. Dwarf. Tiny. Waff. <laughs> the squirrel. Barbarian. That's what I want. Is I the dwarf barbarian? Feel me. E green. E green? What? <laughs> For color. Oh. Sea green, tiny dwarf. Tiny dwarf barbarian. Riding a squirrel. Riding a squirrel. Sea green armor. <laughs> Wondering how many commas. No commas. Commas are for adding descriptors to a sentence. And, ju and justifying. So maybe one comma. I'll give you one comma. Dwarf barbarian, comma, who is wearing green armor. The mine's too long. <laughs> Did you already post it, Dragon Turtle? Because I, yeah, if you already posted it, it's already on there. <laughs> like, it's already on the list. <laughs> so. Yeah, then don't worry about it. For next time. Short and concise. Also, yeah, and like, not to give anybody any excuses, but I'm pretty sure based historically on what I've seen you do, Rook, uh, you've got to break the, that rule pretty egregiously before your uh, your suggestion does not get added to the list automatically. Yeah, there's only, I think in the entirety of this, like the stream, I think I've only ever like read something that was just way too complicated and been like, no. <laughs> uh, that being said, like I've also gotten a few where someone will post something that's like really, really long. I'll read it and be like, the only thing that's important to this is that it's an Aarakocra bard. <laughs> like everything else is just fluff, right? And it's like, okay, 
and none of that is relevant. Um, so, so don't not to like I don't want to put anybody on the spot or like make anybody anxious. Write whatever you want. I would prefer if it's less than a sentence, and then I will I will you know do with it what I will. Yeah, just just try to be concise and only include stuff yeah. that that is like visual information, stuff that's actually going to be able to make it into a drawing. I don't need to know about your mother, uh, the gruesome way in which your character's mother died. Yeah, I don't read those on stream. I get those a lot. That's it's all. It's really hard for me to draw dead parents on <laughs> in a character. So. Yeah, yeah. But people especially when you're it. only allowed one, especially when you're only allowed one creature in the drawing, anyway. Mm -hmm. I always feel like the Lokatha should look like potatoes, and I don't know why. <laughs> and so it's like I want to draw this eel, but I kind of want to make it just the head of an eel. Like the whole body is just the head of an eel. Still not happy with this pen. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's just the color. It's giving me like it's like real light, and then it's just it's just solid. It's like hmm, not quite what I want. Do I need to turn the opacity down? Yep, I need to turn the opacity down. Okay. I think I'm really going to end up going very Dr. Seuss on this, uh, on the parts of the, oh, the tuba. The parts of the tuba, yeah. That's fair. Only GLaDOS can be potato. What was the, uh, you are what you eat, so you're 90% potato? <sighs> Is that my chair? Yeah, it was. That's probably a horrible sound. Yeah, that's even coming through Discord. Discord does not know what to do with that. <laughs> which is, I'm sitting on a I'm sitting on a yoga ball today, to try to get some exercise in and correct my posture. And I uh, just ran over my my, my uh, desk lamp. Not happy. <clears throat> So I could do this and just make this my look up. <laughs> Maybe I will. Yeah, me. Okay, neck, rib cage, hips, feet, tiny peen. There we go. One too many legs. <laughs> YouTube just instantly monetizes it. Well, it won't be me this time. No dead ferrets today, please. No dead ferrets today, I promise. No dead ferrets today. Lokatha can be any sort of fish, or is this a homebrew, homebrew flavor? Blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, they're kind of nondescript to a type of fish. They're just fish people. So, yeah. I think most often I've seen them depicted as like some sort of catfish, but yeah, that's what I've seen as well. I also don't think it actually matters.
Gotta sit up straight. Home stew flavor. Stew flavored catfish. I love it when I turn off my turn off the ads. It's constantly YouTube being like, hey, do you want us to turn ads on for you? It's like, no, no, don't. Huh, huh. No. Somebody somebody paid more than you will, so <laughs> no. Took your recommendation to practice line of action and marginal improvements, though my proportions are still meh. Yeah, it's just practice. Just gotta keep practicing. Yep. You you really don't improve that fast. Yeah. The the fastest I have ever improved was in in a formal um, figure drawing class setting. And I actually have come to, to find out that that specific setting was um, kind of extremely unique in the way um, in the way the members of the class actually handled it. So what I would don't say, know that it could be replicated. Yeah, what I would say is that with, when you're doing practices like that, like it really is a numbers game. There's going to yeah. be moments when you do something and you're just like, oh, and something clicks and you're like, yeah, and that, that can fundamentally make big changes. But um, just repetition, right? Like, I like yep. I like the example of if you do one free throw a day, you're still only doing 300 a year. <laughs> like, that's not a lot of practice. But if you do 30 or 40 a day, it starts adding up to, like, thousands of times you practice over the year. So, yeah, especially with, like, like, line of action and stuff, just do a lot. Do a lot of them. Don't get distracted trying to clean them up and change them. See what you did wrong and try to correct it on the next one. And just keep practicing. Just keep practicing. Should be having fun doing it. If you're not having fun doing it, you know, figure out what you like or don't like about it. Sometimes it is just work, though. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with putting in work. I don't know. I was trying to give this guy a little like fisherman robe, and I kind of, I think I kind of lost it. It's just like it's too fluty, it's just it's all over the place. I'll make him a little taller. Maybe that'll help. Little tiny dinosaur man. He is an eel, so he needs a little like eel tail. The other thing to look at with art that um, I try to talk about from time to time, the first time you draw something is probably going to suck. Every time oh, yeah. you draw something. Like, uh, what was his name? The guy that he just passed away last year, I think. Um, he could just bust out, like, massive scenes and characters. <clears throat> like, on walls. But really what he was doing is he had perfected this really loose kind of calligraphy style of ink drawing. So he never had the opportunity to, like, draw things again or to iterate. It was just like, you do it once, you do it, and it's done. Um, and he was amazing. He was really good. And a lot of people learned to try to, like, perfect his style, like, do his style of art. Yeah, and it's emulate like him. emulate him yeah and and his thing for that was you basically have to have the repository of everything you want to do in your visual brain like you have to so that way when you say like oh draw me a car you just draw the car that you have in your head that you've drawn a thousand times already <laughs> and so it's just like it's just it's just practice and practice and practice and practice um yeah when you're just so much of it is muscle memory mm -hmm. so when you're when you're doing like when you're just noodling and creating things out of nowhere uh, the first time you do it, it's kind of going to suck. It just is. And then you, you iterate on it. And that's that's really the trick. So Do your do your liner. Do your practices. Do your sketches. And then if you really like it, uh, draw the same thing again. Just, just draw it again. And draw it better. And just keep doing that over and over and over again. Sometimes with my commission work, 
uh, I have to draw something four or five times. Like, once I'm done, I'm like, yeah, this is the thing I want. And then I redraw it four or five times. <laughs> till it's till it's good. Till the lines are the way I want them to be. Ink and wash is fun for drawing. Apparently, it takes a great amount of knowledge and how calligraphy works. Yeah, I mean, like, just the directionality yeah, yeah. of your paintbrush is something I struggle with, and I just don't like doing it. So I, don't, I haven't practiced it, and I'm not good at it. Um, yeah. This large head and neck compared to the rest of the body. Not saying it's bad, just surprise. Yeah, no, it's terrible. <laughs> like, that's exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> Lokatha look like potatoes. <laughs> They're like 50% head. And then they have like... Meep, meep. That actually hung me up on uh, the um, one of the guys hired me for the Bellum, I believe it's called B E H L O M. They're doing like an insect inspired insect inspired five E uh, module, and they really wanted something that was like <clears throat> they wanted a, a guy that was a beetle. I'm like, oh yeah, and I drew this huge buff beetle guy, and they're like, no, 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 we want him to look like a potato. I was just like, oh. <laughs> so I had to go back and redesign him. I think I came up with a pretty good design, but like, uh, it's not my normal normal thing to do something so like weirdly proportioned. I very much like drawing human proportioned things. But if you understand the rules, you can break them. That's the fun part. Proportions only matter to the one thing you're drawing. Which that's a good, that's a good, actually maybe a good thing to talk about is a lot of times we will push back when people are like, oh, that's just my style. Um, yep. Really what we're saying is like the style you've chosen is not consistent within itself. And that's, that's what makes things look kind of amateurish and weird. So if you have something with like just line weights that are all over the place or things that are messy, like right here. <laughs> yep. Like those are the things we're talking about when we say things like, yeah, are kind of <clears throat> proportionality yeah, yeah. is wrong. Or if your arms, but, like, even though I've done, like these arms are weird looking, they're the same length. So proportionally, this thing is, is you know, it looks like it makes sense. Yeah. In, in order for something to be your style, you have to have chosen to do it. Yep. And that's something that just comes with working on your, your art. Yep. Yep. I still gave him this weird, like, overcoat thing. the sea captain <clears throat> I think I messed up on following through with the line from spine to leg proportionally matters in the thing you've drawn so sucks to be them I'm making them a potato <laughs> hey potatoes need to be drawn too right they can be proportional I'm actually showing me a quick way to appropriate hands and feet with trapezoids good yeah yeah Yeah, my big thing for hands and feet is basically, like, get your line out where you want it, and then uh, you get, like, a square, and then I do a pointer finger, triangle for the middle, and then the pinky. Um, and then that's that's it. And then for feet, I do the, kind of the same thing. Get an ankle, get a foot, get a heel, and you're good to go. That's a foot. Like, um Getting, getting lines quick and just flowing, like, that's the first step. It's just, it's not the last step. And I think that's really what people struggle. Is they, yeah, want, yeah. they want the first step to be the last step. And it's like, nope, 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 nope. 
A lot of steps. I still struggle with that. Yep. <laughs> Why does it take so long to do the style I want? Well, it's because you're trying to fucking do an oil paint in digital. It takes time. Yep. Speaking of, my half hour's up. Yeah, I think I'm done with this fish man. <laughs> I like him. He's cute. His clothes is garbage because I just noodled it. <laughs> but that's okay. Like, yeah. That's what happens. <clears throat> Definitely need to iterate more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yep. That's that's the, the best way to improve is to just keep reiterating. Iterative design. I am doing a female gene stealer hybrid. I don't know what that is. What is a gene stealer? It sounds familiar. I think we've probably talked about it before, but I have no idea. Gene stealers are from 40K. Okay. Infest colonies and cities belonging to other creatures repopulating with their people and attempting to establish cults. So it's like kind of like changelings. Is my guess? Mm, oh, something like that. Okie dokie. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a sexual, essentially a uh, like an infested Terran. Gotcha. Gene that stealer makes sense. cultist. Okay, cool. Oh, my dice are rolling really low today. I rolled a five. A five. Blind human eloquence bard with a horn of blasting and a wide brim straw hat. Okay, so music themes today. I guess so. Draw the horns. Cosmic, welcome in. It's Warhammer. Yeah, yeah, cool. Cosmic, what are you confused would... about? Uh, they are a Tyranid advanced infiltrator. Cool, okay. Third or fourth generations look more like human than the first and second, and pure strains are totally inhuman. Gotcha. Here in it are the are the Zerg look alike, right? Yeah. Or the the thing that the Zerg is based off of, I guess. I think so. They look a little like, um, essentially, yeah. So it's a humanoid Tyranid. Is essentially what I'm trying to draw. What are you doing? You want some more human looking ones? Look at IR. The Gene Stealer more Magos? Day three of Sticker Mule Madness. What do they want me to buy today? 50 circle stickers. Do we have anything circled that uh, we want to get turned into stickers? Did that say $3? Because I will buy that. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's not three dollars, but I guess I could make circle stickers of the new logo, new Birdman. That could be fun. Send those to the Patreon members. What was the other part of this? Uh, I don't remember. Hmm. There we go. Dressed like Rambo, wielding a plasma pistol. Okay. I don't know if I can draw that because Rambo doesn't wear a shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that breaks the, that breaks the rules of YouTube. <laughs> Typed in female gene splicer and or gene stealer, and there is a lot of just 
I'm gonna say horny shit out there. Yep. That does not surprise me at all. The green cami Rambo rather than the shirtless Rambo. We could do it. I mean, I might have to do that. Yeah. When people say dress like Rambo, I think of just like super buff. Same. I don't want to give her the weird head ridge thing that I see on some of these. I can't imagine like you're just hanging out and some some dude walks up that's just like pink and bald and has glowing yellow eyes and three arms. And they're just like, hello, fellow humans. Would you like to join a cult? And people are like, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> what else am I doing, right? From what I understand of the, of the Warhammer 40k universe, it, that actually seems not implausible, uh, especially within the human faction. Based on all of the the genetic nonsense they do to their soldiers. There's a, someone on YouTube who does, they just talk about Warhammer lore, and every now and again they come across my feed, and they were talking about how disposable the human race is, um, because most of the, the Imperial people that we actually like see and talk about, and like the, even the Space Marines are just like the top tier collective whatever. Yep. Kind of like seeing th seeing Captain America and thinking like, oh, this is what humans are like. And it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, the three armed are more of a second and first generation and usually hidden when possible. Not from normal mutants. Look like don't happen. Gotcha. So this, so this person should look, should look like a human, even though it's kind of shitty. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, but it's, like, for most people in the Warhammer universe, most humans, anyways, like, your existence is wake, being born on a mining planet until the planet is stripped mine, and then the planet explodes. And it's like, that sucks. <laughs> Sounds awful. So, kind of a brutal, brutal universe to live in. Yeah. I'm, I'm not interested in playing it because the, the story is being told in that game are not stories I'm interested in, in participating in. I don't begrudge anybody who enjoys it, though. And my brother has spent so much money <laughs> on Warhammer. I do wish that, that Games Workshop was less of a shit show about... I mean, so here's my... I don't want to say my defense for Games Workshop, but like... Games Workshop uh, produces a really good product. Like their figures are awesome, um, yeah. And they they make that really good they make really good paint for them. So it's like that in itself should make the company less kind of pissy about things, um, because they already like they already are the cream of the crop. Like they they're the the the, the, the gold standard for stuff. Um, mm. I mean, actually, I don't know. Do they produce Citadel paints? I don't know if I, I don't, don't know, know if Game Workshop actually does that or not. Um, it is 
called plastic crack for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so, so what I'm getting at is like, I, I can definitely see them not wanting like custom, um, custom minis in like tournament play. That makes total sense to me. I think that's totally yeah. fine. I have no problem with that. But like, they shouldn't go after people making custom stuff for home play. I think that's yeah. silly, because like, people who want to spend money on figures basically aren't going to spend money on those figures unless they want to do tournament play. So, like you already you've already cornered that part of the market. Let people get creative and have fun with it. Yeah. It it always feels like a a, a company a, a a company that's gotten so big that they don't realize how much they're shooting themselves in the foot monetarily. Mm-hmm. Uh because the allowing a like uh, allowing third party stuff to uh, produce stuff uh, essentially makes your audience bigger which also makes your revenue stream bigger in the long run right and I think part of that is like once your company is so big you no longer need like once you have name recognition like Nintendo is Nintendo yep. for a long time yep. if you said I want to buy a Nintendo people didn't understand that Xbox was a different thing um, yep so like like I get that. Like Nintendo wants to make maintain control over their stuff, um, and I yeah, I don't know why I don't know why Games Workshop is so. I think really like we've just seen so many people start creating figures and stuff that do bleed into that world. Like they don't want competition in game stores. That's really what they didn't want. So I think it's a case of business people trying to do the creative and community stuff. Like the accounts and trying to tell engineers how to build, maybe. Especially when they aren't repairing, repairing, reprinting old models. Oh yeah, that's stupid. I don't yeah, like that. yeah. Yep, that's what needs to turn off. Cosmic, I don't understand that sentence. <laughs> I don't understand that sentence at all. Uh, humans are the one resource the Imperium isn't short on. That's fair. Yeah. I think I made the ears too tall and too long. Are Tyranids dinosaurs or bugs? Oh. <laughs> I watched Dan and Aaron play. Uh, Contra. Contra. Yeah, I, was like, oh, I love Contra. And I started watching it. I was like, what is this shit? <laughs> what is going on here? This is not the game yeah. I remember, especially with all the uh, like the, the story. I loved it. I watched yeah. them finish it, and they were both just like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is not what I remember at all. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was listening to that while I was doing my workout this morning, and I had to stop a couple of times in the middle of sets because I was laughing at them, laughing at the stupidity of yeah. the writing. It's so funny. I'm, I am glad that if they were going to write a story for the Contra remake, that they didn't put enough thought into it to actually like take it seriously. I mean, at the same time, that's what I'm worried it's... about. I feel like the writers did. I feel like the writers like thought they were, you know... No, they could. They can't. That's, they can't. Have, that's like, not possible. Because like Contra is great, just as a two Marines get dropped into this thing. Oh shit, aliens! <laughs> right? Like that's yeah. great. Yeah, totally. They're closer to bugs, but sort of yes. Okay. I yeah. I was I was sold on that whole series when when uh I, in the first episode uh Aaron spent. 15 minutes having like throwing a tantrum about how he couldn't play any of the lady of the new lady characters yet <laughs> yeah the best part was like this character can dash and the whole time i'm like dan dan please push other buttons push any other button on your controller and yep. then as soon as aaron picks that character he's like oh your character can dash and it's like yep <laughs> <laughs> Dan is kind of like me, uh, not really built mentally for the the combat games. 
I don't know. I'm, I'm one of those people that as soon as I pick up a game, like even with my keyboard, I push every button on the keyboard just to see what happens. Mm. And sometimes that screws me up because I'm like, I don't know what I did. Something is broken now. <sighs> Sokka is a real one? What do you mean? Watching the second episode of Avatar The Last Airbender. A bug? I liked the new Avatar series. I thought it was good. I'm excited for I'm, whatever yeah, I'm, Team Avatar is making next, but yeah, same. I'm uh, I'm seeing a lot of criticism of the of the live action series that I think looks valid. Yeah, it's fine. Um, in terms of robbing characters like Sokka of their potential character growth. Yeah, and I was originally, like, I was kind of bummed about that, but at the same time, like, it's eight episodes. So it's essentially, like, do you want character growth for all the characters or one character? Like, which would you prefer? Because yeah. the Avatar, it was, like, it was, like, 20 episodes the first season was? Yeah, it was, uh, the animated series was long. It was long. And sure, there was the... I'm going to say like a quarter of it was filler, but even the filler, they managed to, to keep character progression right. involved. Like so. something I would have loved to see with the new one, um, the new series is um, Katara just like, she kind of sucks and then she's just kind of really good. And they, bas yep. they basically talk about all the practicing she does off scene. It's like, eh, I would have liked to see some of that, but yeah, I get it. Uh, from right here, they ruined Azula too. I don't think they ruined Azula. Um, they changed her a little bit, uh, and I'm okay with what they did for that. Yeah, they make they make uh, <laughs> they make Fire Lord, what's his name? Ozai. Ozai, way more douchey. <laughs> They're just like, oh yeah, he's not just he's not just an evil king. He's a real evil king. And you're like, okay, great. <laughs> kind of yes, I was no longer a sociopath elitist. I mean No, she's one hundred percent that. She's one hundred percent that. But you just I think I think the real trigger with it that people don't like is like the pacing is different. And so they tell you like they tell you what's going on globally first and then it's the same thing with with azula they basically like tell you why she's broken to begin with um whereas in the cartoon she just kind of shows up and then you kind of realize that she's uh that she's a deeply flawed and broken character yeah but she just she with... starts off being like i'm a badass look at me and then you're like whoa she's got some issues <laughs> and yep and like it yeah so they don't you don't get that slow burn you're just like no Oh, her father is 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 uh, basically just like abusing both of them. And yep. It's like, oh shit! So it feels it feels a lot more impactful, and you just you, she becomes a sympathetic character from the get go, essentially. Yeah. Um, whereas before she was kind of Zuko's uh, foil foil for a while. Yeah, yeah. And then becomes, and then we start seeing that like, yeah, yeah. yeah. How how much her father damaged her as well mm -hmm. and how willing he is to like literally not give he doesn't care about them at all Period. yeah no he doesn't he doesn't care about them at all he yeah. only cares about his own power so that that's he's perfectly willing to destroy azula in, in pursuit of, yep. of his own grandeur and i think i think that's the same thing with with um with katara as well like she still gets some great moments which i'm really happy about but we don't get to see the build-up for it it's just we're kind of told that um, that she's been practicing and that she is very good at being a waterbender and you're like okay but and I, and I think had had the show not existed right if the show had not existed and they just did it i wouldn't have the same kind of like heartfelt uh, attachment i have to all the characters yep but it's still a good story i think they did a good job one of my friends who hadn't seen the cartoon was basically like i don't know i watched it it's okay it's kind of mid and i'm like yeah it's fair it's like it's a netflix it's a netflix show um, yep. I didn't expect it to be super, super good. And that's okay. So, yeah. 
It's not bad. From Evil King to Evil Ming the Merciless to go with the Flash Gordon style of genre stealers. <laughs> Flash, ah! What else does she need to be a Rambo? She got the tank top? She got uh, the bandolier? Like a, a bandana or like... Oh, she doesn't have a bandana. Something tied around... Oh, and the and the choker, the necklace. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he have dog tags too? I believe so. Is that? I mean, the first one was was kind of pro army, right? So that would make sense. I've never actually watched Rambo all the way through. I think. I think the most Rambo I've gotten is is a Weird Al's depiction of it from UHF. <laughs> I would say just watch Hot Shots. With Charlie Sheen being like <laughs> playing Rambo. I think that was Charlie Sheen. Is it just me, or does the perspective probably play hell with getting proportions right, especially with symmetry? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Absolutely yep. it does. Got to put everything in a box. Everything in a box. <laughs> I hate that there's a contingent for the 40K fan base that sees gene stealers and thinks I can fix them. Uh, that, that's the internet. That's just the internet. Yep. The, the whole internet is awash with people who will take the nastiest, most problematic shit and... Make it horny. Yep. Cough, cough, serial killers. Just saying. Yep. And certain TV shows did not help with that. Yep, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, but he wouldn't murder me. No, he totally would. <laughs> I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> it's like, all right, something's going on here. Oh, honey, get some help, please. Yep. Oh. I hate this hand. I hate this whole hand. I mean, D&D is even, even kind of like a wash with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Not even just a horny part, but just like people wanting to play... Um, I was going to say off spec, but that's not right. Like, I want to play a holy paladin drow. And it's just like, all right. I mean, like, you're going to have to come up with a weird backstory for that, but I like it. Like, that's totally fine. As long as you can make it make sense. Yep. So. You sure you don't want to just do generic dark elf? It'll be easier. It'll be no, weird. they got to be drow. I want them to be edgy, but also really cool. It's like, okay. And also perfectly moral in every way. And have a great ass. <laughs> just like, damn it. <laughs> always blends back. Always blends back. In a perfect rack, I want to enter every room tits first. <laughs> Jim Butcher, get out of here. <laughs> <Start trying. laughs> Eldar were born on the horny molded by it. Yep. I need to put stars without numbers again. I mean, you say that, someone will find a way to fuck that spaceship. I'm just putting it out there. Yup. <laughs> hey, nerds, you want to join a cult? <laughs> That's what I feel like this lady saying. <laughs> Markiplier would do it. Markiplier would join this cult. Yeah, but he's got enough money to fix the problems afterwards after he gets out of it, so... Oh, I was just saying he'd, he'd want this lady to step on him. That was my joke. Well, well I mean that, too. 
<laughs> LG, welcome in. <laughs> Cold joint. <laughs> Do, 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 do. I think I'm about done with this one. I think I'm going to move on to the next one. I got 10 minutes still. And I think I'm going to take them. <laughs> that being said, I am enjoying this, uh, this pace. It is kind of deeply freeing to be like, it doesn't matter if it's done or not. <laughs> I got to put it down either way. Sorry if anybody in chat was looking forward to me doing a whole ass fucking free commission. Stippling, what's it called? Uh, modeling, patterning? yeah, pattern Model words, modeling. modeling, yeah, we'll do a little more modeling, modeling, and then I'll call this one good. Damn it, posture, do your, do your job, do your job back. Keep my body straight. I guess it's my core. My core is not doing its job. Yeah, mine either. Okay, I think that's good. I'm gonna go refill my water glass and then we'll do another one. So hang tight. All right. Hang tight. <clears throat> What's up, cat? How is this hand worse? I think it's not all of it is worse. Stars without numbers, Elliot, is what you're talking about. I'm, I'm, um, kind of looking at a lot of different games right now for game design. I think I'm gonna write that down so I don't, so I can check that out. If I can find a fucking pencil. without numbers uh has anybody did anybody watch critical roles uh dagger heart play test one shot all right what happened 
Uh, I'm just kind of talking about game stuff. Elliot's been talking about Stars Without Numbers. It's a free-to-play ETRPG game, I guess. I'm assuming it's a TTRPG game. Um, talking about a bunch of stuff, and I don't know. I was getting into talking about game design. Because last night I watched uh, Critical Role's Daggerheart one-shot playtest, now that they're in open beta. Mm -hmm. um, and they're doing some interesting stuff with the system. It's definitely a, a, like a system designed to drive narrative games yeah yeah uh which i think is it's kind of perfect same. for what for what critical role is looking for mm -hmm. all right here we go anyway i thought that was interesting that does not belong in there that belongs in that okay three a half red dragon half fire genasi It says, maybe long hair made of fire but not look weird doesn't fit. Okay. Why use why use many words when few words work just work just fine? I'm gonna I'm gonna eschew that. So it's a fire genasi half dragon. Sorcerer. With wings and With tail. Yeah, and fire hair if you can make it work. Mm -hmm. Still looks human enough to sort of look attractive. I'm going to take a guess. Is this Dragon Turtles? <laughs> is this what you're talking about? This is very long. <laughs> it actually goes off the page, and I can't read the rest of it. Whoops. Mm, the, part that was, the part that was cut off the page <laughs> that I had to like go in and look at says, let me know if it's too long, I can shorten it. <laughs> <laughs> I've drawn Conan O'Brien in a cravat. Just a pyromancer, not the tank. Uh, so here's how I would have written this. Half dragon fire genasi. Sorcerer barbarian. That's it. That's all we need. Definitely too long. Got it. It was physically too long. <laughs> not, uh, not that I don't appreciate the uh, the effort. It was just too long for my my notepad. You didn't mean barbarian. Oh, with the attitude of a barbarian. Okay. Sorceress. Dragonborn sorceress. Half dragon fire genasi dragon. Sorry, got it. Humanoid. Cosmic. Humanoid, but not too dragony. Cosmic, if you forgot, it's not too late to submit one. <laughs> if you've got yours straight in your head, then I'm ready to roll two. Go for it. Um, Fourteen. Male Hobgoblin, Oath of Redemption Paladin. With horns like his Kirin? Patron? Kyrene? K-I-R-I-N. Clad in silver half-plate armor wielding a Kanbo club. Kanab? Kanabo club? Kanabo club. Hmm. Hobgoblin paladin with horns and a club. Uh, okay. And, uh, ear horns like a Kirin. Kirin, okay. okay. It's not how I would pronounce that, but that's fine. Here in Chinese Dragon Horse. Ah. What was the what was the type of club again? Uh spell it for me if it's yeah. hard to pronounce. K A N A B O. Kanabo. Kanabo. Oh, okay. It's the uh, Japanese Ogre Spiked Mace Club. 
Cool. Got it. This one sounds like fun. I might have trouble keeping this one under 30 minutes. That's all right. You know? <laughs> the, the rules are only the ones you've applied, so... Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'd like to be consistent with them, especially because it's... been useful so far. I think all pyromancers should be barbarian. Uh, <laughs> the barbarian rage. Now, if she's a half dragon and half genasi, like, I could draw her as a. I think I might just do like a. I, I like the half dragons being still humanoid. Maybe a little sharper features. I'm definitely going to give her the horns. Chandra Pyromancer. Oh, Rook, have you seen that they're um they're rebooting the the nineties uh X Men cartoon? Oh nice. They kind of did in 2000-ish. Um, yeah. That was like Wolverine in the X-Men. That wasn't bad. Yeah. This one is this one is very, very specifically like supposed to be picking up where the 90s cartoon very specifically left nice. off. Yeah, it was a weird hanger. Weird, weird, weird cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and they're even using the same intro music and I, I like I heard it in the... Uh, um... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I heard it in the trailer for it, and oh, the rush of dopamine. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the, the interesting amazing. thing about that series was that what they did was they basically took a whole bunch of old X-Men comics, and they would they would do the entire run of the comic in like two or three episodes. Yeah, So yeah. like that's what they did. So, so the, like this would be, you, you get to meet uh, people like, uh, bishop and stuff because they're like this is the uh, apocalypse yep. section or like this one's gonna be about cable this is the phoenix saga this is the the dark brotherhood like and so that was really cool because you got to learn about those different runs of comics very quickly and just like here's a cool thing about it here's how brood works and like yeah it was great i loved it it's a little weird to watch now just because it's dated but, oh, yes. but not like not like uh. weirdly dated it's just like oh this is old <laughs> yeah <laughs> This is a cartoon about old people because Wolverine's like 45. <laughs> Which a lot of cartoons these days are about like high school kids and stuff. Yeah. I, I do think that it aged probably better than most things produced in the era. That being said, I think there's still probably some problematic stuff there. Yeah. But you know what? That's okay. We can acknowledge it and. and Gene! <laughs> <laughs> Friggin' Wolverine's great. Uh, I I always hated Cyclops though. Oh yeah, Scott Summers is kind of a dick. <laughs> like... I mean, so is Wolverine, but like at least he's at least he's not pretentious about it. <laughs> Trying to make her feel really like kind of long. 
give her some like fun dragon dragon vibes. I'm gonna get the tail in here too. I'll move over a little bit. Still never sure exactly how to draw a bugbear, or I mean a, a hobgoblin. I always want to do either normal goblin or bugbear. Yeah. End up something with something weirdly in between. Goblins with sideburns, that's what I've been drawing. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up on chat here. I was thinking more like general stereotypes for the personality, though. Apparently, pyromancers have enough of a reputation that I didn't need to. Yeah, hot tempered. Hot tempered and bold. That's my pyromancer. Would have made them stone agey or nomadic? Looking for the loincloth aesthetic. Oh, <laughs> oh for a barbarian. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm guessing based on the descriptions. I mean, so that that's part of the reason I want descriptions to be um simple. Because if you really want, like, a ton of specific stuff, like, then you should be commissioning Druid or I. Like, you just should be. Yeah. And yeah. so a lot of this is just, hey, give me a prompt, and then so I can see what I can come up with. That's it. Um, but beyond that, uh, I'm very happy to, you know, try and see what we can come up with. Yep. Speaking of commissions, I... Hopefully, we'll be ready to start taking commissions next week. It does depend a little bit on uh, whether or not I can get all of my financial shit worked out before then, but that's the goal. Got a PayPal? Not yet. Okay. What was the other one? That was another one that I was thinking about using. Coffee? Uh, coffee works. Yeah, coffee's actually not bad because I, I didn't realize you could do like invoices and stuff for it. Yeah, um, which and is I think cool. yeah, I think coffee also. I think the only downside takes, to that takes less. Yeah, is transferring out of coffee. Like they they're not they're not a bank. <laughs> they're no, a company. Yeah. So like they want to send you your money and you need a place to send it to. So as long as you have that, like if you haven't set it up with a, a bank account or something, then that works great. Whereas PayPal, I can, I can take in money, um, for like from commissions and stuff and then also mm -hmm. spend it to like buy the Patreon stuff. So like I have one point of contact there for the business and that's great. And then if I ever have to like pay myself out, I can do that too. Um, so it's just that's just another a, a kind of a nice thing, but it does it does charge money. There's yeah. like a small percent fee on it. I think it's like three percent or something or ten percent. I know Thor from uh, Pirate Games, mm -hmm. whatever the a short comparing the two and said why kind of specifically why he likes coffee better. Yeah. But um, I 
don't know if I'm gonna make enough right away that it's gonna matter. So I'm I'm still weighing options, which is one of the reasons why I couched that. Yeah. In terms of if I can get my shit together, then next week. Yeah, that's a good way. Good good thing to have in your mind. Uh, bu -bu 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 goblins with mullets. Uh, if I remember correctly, especially the personality and mindset of something, nothing less lessons. Not the less lessons learned, more clear and concise. Thanks for doing the stuff for free. Probably commission you guys if I had money to spare. Hopefully this fixes it. Yeah, no problem. That's the point. I like I like giving back to the community. So. Yeah, I and do I do not regret any of the uh, highly detailed missions that. I have drawn for you guys as much as I've been bitching about it this the last couple <laughs> weeks. <laughs> I uh, really like drawing, and I really like having prompts for stuff to draw. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. we've definitely we've definitely had that was more of a comment on we've had people in the past get very very like kind of angrily upset that we aren't spending tons and tons of time on their stuff. Yeah. It's just like this is for the community. I, I need to get a lot of them done, so like I don't put a lot of time into these. So yeah. that's just how it goes. And that's I have always, I have always put lots of time into mine because it's what I choose to do. Because it's how I've been yeah. training myself to do my art. So I'm a numbers guy. I mean, you're in a position where it, it benefits you to be yeah. a numbers guy. I've just been along for the ride. So. No. I've done a 40-year-old virgin pose, but yeah, it's fine. Will it recover? Yeah. Okay. It feels... Pallid and eat me, so I'm not bothered by it. Sure. It's just a little bit funny. No, not scales. I don't want to do scales. Maybe spines. Maybe she's got elbow spines. And then we'll give her some little scales here. That'll work. Goblin, you're in the way. Oh, I thought you were talking about mine. No. Little, <laughs> little goblin's just in the way. Oh, she's supposed to have wings too, right? Shoot. Oh, yeah. I forgot about she the wings. Is. I can do this. Mm. I can do this. Ooh, I really like those uh, that pleated look you managed to get in on her skirt. Thank you.
I always love it when when an artist is able to get in fabric feel with just a bunch of, of squiggly lines. Yeah, I've been looking at a lot of, uh, of Wayne Reynolds stuff. I'm just trying to like look at how he does fabric. Yep. And that's what he does. He's just like, this is one piece of cloth. Texture, 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 texture. texture. And it's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> That'd be a good idea to play that Rem Lezer as a paladin. I don't know who that is. Who's Rem Lezer? It also serves as a free trial for commission stuff as art practice, so win, 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 win. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the big thing. This is basically advertisement. You guys are watching one giant commercial. It's great. Paladins are allowed to be a bit cheesy and corny. Most paragons are. Superman, Captain America, etc. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Because, I mean, the, the, the crux of the matter is that if you are a paladin, you're kind of one-dimensional. Like, that's just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've you've specifically chosen to be one-dimensional. Yeah. <laughs> Not that you have to be, like, lawful stupid, but, like, the the inherent nature of deciding that one thing is the, the, the way above all else is just inherently kind of that direction. So, um, I love playing paladins. They're super fun. <laughs> super fun. But yeah, I and I hate them because they hit a little too close to home religiously most of the time. <laughs> that being said, I do I like things I would not. I've said it a more yeah, than I, I, <laughs> I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times. I love uh, second edition Pathfinder's Champion. Yeah, Champion's good. Turns out, dragon, half dragon, uh, sorcerers are sucking by. That's what I've created. I don't know when this happened, but here we are. <laughs> I've created a demon girl. Burning would be proud. Yeah. Looks like something like Michael Carpenter from... Yeah, Michael Carpenter's like one of my favorite paladins. Great character, still one-dimensional. I think literally anything isn't my thing. Literary analysis isn't my thing. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, that's that's very much it. Like, Michael in that book specifically, um, just, he is... Like, honest to a fault, essentially. And it's great. He reminds me of, uh, it's in the Wheel of Time series, the, the princess's brother, who is literally described as the type of person who will do what he believes is right, no matter who it hurts. Okay. Uh, the, the difference is that uh, Michael's faith is so strong that uh, when he does what is right, nobody gets hurt. Yep. Which I find more frustrating, not less. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, and that's that's kind of intentional, right? Because like that is yeah, no, that is to the chagrin 100%. of Dresden all the time. Because Dresden yeah. is like, I live in a world where fairies and deities are real, so I understand that your god is probably real, but your god has never done anything for me, and it pisses me off. And then Michael's just like, I'm God doing stuff for you, and he's just like, You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong, but I hate it. <laughs> so it's, it's great. I think they're a great character, like dichotomy. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I think I think even in some of the first books, Dresden basically doesn't believe that he's actually a uh, like in in that world. Belief ma magic is belief. Like the 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 more yeah, you yeah, believe yeah. in something, the more true it is. And so Dresden has this theory that like I don't think God really exists, but there's so many people believing in it that it has its own magical power. And it's just like, yeah. And he kind of runs with that for a long time in the series. Yeah, uh, I remember that very specifically being his his description of, of how he can work with Michael mm -hmm. uh, and not necessarily believe in in his god in the the first book where they introduce Michael yeah. as a character. Yeah, because he's like Michael's essentially just a magic practitioner, but a Catholic one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I think I'm done with this. I think that's where we're going to go. Uh, I will turn off the, the goblin. Oh, I'll post it later. It's fine. I'll post it later. But we'll post all these in Discord afterwards so people can grab those yeah, and yeah. use them for their games and stuff. And then...
eight. Female hunter ranger, nomadic cartographer. Looks human, but has golden eyes and freckles. Fackles form a drawn bow and arrow constellation? What? With long four pink stars on her forehead, short hair. Okay. That is very complicated. We will try it. We will try our best. So this is another example of like too much detail now that I can't do this but because you're so the person that suggested this is so specific on the face that it's gonna be really hard for me to show that this person is a ranger as well because I just don't have the space for it so I'm probably just gonna draw a portrait <laughs> yep I'm just gonna draw I'm just gonna draw a portrait so I can get her face in here and then we'll go from there if they're if they're looking for a token that's maybe not necessarily a bad thing right, right? yeah but I'm not gonna get in. I'm not gonna be able to like, draw like a bow or anything, and a tattoo on a face. Like there's just not enough space for that. Yeah. So. I'm gonna show off the eyes because that's what they. What the shit, cat? Chasing ghosts. The zoomies? Yeah, hold on a second. I'll take some photos and I'll post them in the Discord. He's done, gone, lost his mind. Pixel! <laughs> Don't look at me! When my cat was still alive, when if you caught him having the zoomies, uh, he would like, he would literally stop and bathe himself, and pretend like no, like nothing had happened. Yep, that's what Pixel does too. Except sometimes Pixel will also like, Pixel and Skippy will both do this. If you catch them, they will stop and then they will start scratching the floor. It's like I fucking hate this carpet. I hate <laughs> it. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna post that in the Discord. He's losing his goddamn mind. Da -da, da -da -da -da. I haven't posted anything in general or in the actual cat for a while. Oh, I posted the bunnies the other day. Yeah. Chasing ghosts. Has Pix tried to attack the bunnies yet? Oh, yeah. No, he hates them. He hates them with a passion. <laughs> you get the fuck out of my yard. I probably should not have made these antlers as big as I did because this is going to make it really difficult to do a big overhand swing with the club. Man, antlers are difficult to draw. Yeah. When they said golden eyes, do you think they meant like golden pupils or just like gold glowing eyes um i think i would have interpreted as the as pupils mm. see i would have gone with just glowing glowing eyeballs 
I have a if Logan. Welcome in, Gamma. If it was for the the fire elemental half dragon girl, I think I that's where I would have put the glowy eyes. <laughs> Freckles that make oak, bow and arrow, and star. Is this Stargate fan art? Maybe. Is it? There, there are some things that, like, literally sound really cool, but then, like, don't make a lot of sense when you try to actually visualize them. Yeah. Like, do they have a tattoo? Is it five five freckles? Like, how how freckly does the star function? Is it? An, I'm gonna, hold on a second. I'm gonna read this again. Her freckles form a drawn bow and arrow constellation with a long four point star on her forehead. A four-pointed star is a square. Unless you're doing one of these compass Yeah, like rows, a compass ass. Yeah. And if it's a star constellation, like a bow and arrow constellation, is that like this? And then is the um, star here? Do I draw the lines of the constellation? Or do I just draw a bunch of dots on her forehead? Just draw the bunch of dots. Mm -hmm. Just just draw the Sagittarius constellation. Yeah, I'll look that up. Oh boy. That's just total garbage. Like, yep. I don't, I, I can see it. No, I can see it. I can see it. Okay. Kind of. Maybe. Anyway, that's that's just a, a half dozen stars, right? <laughs> it's more than that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, a dozen. It's just a dozen dots, then. I don't see how this is supposed to be a centaur with a bow. Neither do I. It's all made up bullshit. Hmm. It's fun and interesting made up bullshit, but it's yeah. still just made up bullshit. <laughs> Draw a human with human-like detail. <laughs> <laughs> Freckles that make arrows and stars like constellations. That's, that's kind of what, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like four, four pointed stars, but also freckles. Because essentially, it's like the Sagittarius is bonkers. Hold on a second. Gotta put this up here. Does Raptor Squirrel ever make it onto the list? Uh, I don't know. Was it put on the list? We haven't run into it yet. I've not yet seen it. That's essentially Sagittarius. Yep. That does not look like the thing they asked me to make it look like. <laughs> what do I do? I put it, but sometimes uh, YouTube will not actually post my comments. Did you guys get my suggestion? I did not see your suggestion. Where was that?
Was the beefcake male dragonborn barbarian your suggestion? I thought that was a comment for a different one. Okay, I'll put that on the list now. My time's up, so I'm gonna finish this club. I'm gonna be it for this one. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like maybe uh, I'm wondering if you maybe put it on a different post. Did it get put on the right post? How would you draw the plus one? Raptor squirrel, part raptor, part squirrel, ambush predator. Put it on the list. Is that a monster? Because it doesn't have a class. It's on the list. I do like the idea of a cartographer ranger. Yeah, me too. All right, I'm ready for my next one. Oh, damn. Okay, hit me. Uh, 17. Strawny Dwarf Arcanist Arcane Trickster. Illusion Magic theme, if possible. Strawny Dwarf Illusion. Okay. Arcane Trickster. Do, 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 do. Saying your character has no class. Yeah, it's a monster. Okay, that's fine. I like the idea of a photographer ranger. Unfortunately, that's more of a bard domain. Hmm. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. It's like a Pokemon ranger. <laughs>
I really want to put like just an actual star on her forehead here. Maybe that'll help. Give her some more freckles. Bad posture. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna roll. Hold on a second. Here, get upside down for a second. Okay. Now that the blood has thoroughly rushed to my head. <laughs> I need to flip this, don't I? Yes, I do. It's crooked. It's crooked is AF. Crooked AF. Nothing that can't be fixed. How do I want to depict illusion magic? What is this music? These people have no idea that animals are bulkier than us. What y'all mean? Should we take a yard stick to Rook's back? I don't know if that would help. Maybe it would. <laughs> Get the existential political Rook out. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not ready for that today. Yeah, let's let's please avoid that. I've got to pay my mortgage later, so today I'm grumpy capitalist rook. Hair is hard. Yep. Why did I decide to do curved braids? Probably because mustache braids is instantly reads as dwarf. I could buy that. Okay, cartographer. Freckled, golden eyes. Maybe I should put golden eyes in. Maybe that would help. Yeah, maybe. And I think you've done pretty well with the hair shapes. It all reads his hair. That's good. This eye is a little bit too far. Let's do this. This eye. Boop, 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 boop. Need to go scooch. There we go. That's better. Better. The sound effects help. They always help. Yep. Wrong color. 
Hold on. Uh, There's actually a funny story I want to say. 1800s people saying things like guns only make them angry. For bears, I mean. I mean, yeah. Bears, bears big, beefy, scary things. And if you shoot a bear and it doesn't kill it, it does just make it angrier. <laughs> but the same thing holds true for people as well. <laughs> be far more on taxation if you got to choose what to spend it on. I mean, that's how that's how politics work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It turns out you can actually do that. It, it just means that you have to, you have to put participate. in the work. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have to participate in in the voting at every little stage at every level. And if somebody you vote for doesn't spend your tax money the way you wanted them to, then... Kick them out. Yeah, vote them out. That's the power you have. Recall. Special elections. Let's do it. Okay, how do I make her look like a cartographer or a ranger? <laughs> Bless you. Sorry, yeah, I did that directly into the microphone. I apologize, everybody. That one snuck up on me. So, how do you make her look like a cartographer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is the question. really old style round uh wireframe glasses that could be interesting maybe drawing a map uh <laughs> given the angle pretty difficult that might work makes a cartographer a cartographer besides maps uh cartography tools yeah like a sextant that would be could put that like on her neck or something that could be interesting positive news i'm really hoping the bank signs off on me getting this new place it'd be great to break rent trap cycle yeah best of luck yeah. and get that refinanced as soon as you can <laughs> dude drip She just needs more cartographer drip. Maybe we could do like the four pointed star around her neck. Give her like a necklace or something. That could be interesting. Yeah. What kind of clothes did Galileo wear? He was just kind of an asshole. I don't know. Yeah. Let's let's not hold him up as an example of anything, please. Well, cartography. <laughs> <laughs> there were other cartographers. Lewis and Clark? Yeah, I guess they were not cartographers. That, yeah. Not that they're moderately less problematic, but I don't know. I just found out Rook was streaming. Yeah, welcome in. Welcome in. It's more like taking out a mortgage to pay off the stepdad's existing mortgage. He's moving closer to my sister, and I'm taking my house and land. Nice! That's really cool. Yeah, I hope that works out for you. Ah, uh, yes. Stacking mortgages, the things that I was told uh, in my finance classes, was a thing you should do, and there would never be any bad consequences. <laughs> mortgages are the best rated everything forever. <laughs> oh, the early 2000s. Yup. Who could have foreseen? Except everybody. Everybody. Everybody saw it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, I 
do I want to represent illusion magic? Swirls. Just swirls. Why did I give her super... I was trying to give her puffy shoulder pads. And I don't think it's reading that way. She looks like a wizard now. <laughs> chip chip cheerio. Yeah. Prince Henry the Navigator of Portugal. We already got a lot of homesteading and gardening stuff, but be putting in some solar panels and gardening. Nice. That'd be fun. Very cool. Wizards have a general fantasy academic look, so not far off. That's that's fair, too. I kind of want to give her glasses, but I'm scared to draw on the face. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to turn her into Velma Dinkley here in a second. <laughs> Scoot those over a little bit. Could have drawn him like the uh, the dude from Breath of the Wild, or not Breath of the Wild, but uh, Tears of the Kingdom. The weird oh, science yeah. dude that's just like all abs. Yep. I don't think that's proper lab attire. It's like it's all right. I'm just drawing maps and stuff. You want to touch my butt? It's like hold on a second. What? <laughs> <laughs> If, if scientists were super horny pansexual surfer bros. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> cheating. No, the glasses are cheating. We're drawing Velma as cheating. I'm not sure which. Oh, okay. I like this. So she's got the quiver. We'll give her some arrows. And then we'll put the sextant in here. That is such a... Sextant is such a fun word. It's pretty strange. I like that a, a sextant is essentially a compass, but a compass is something different when used with a sextant. It's just like... Yeah. It's like there's some, some language got confused along the way there. Is the sextant past tense of sexy? I don't think so. Sextant? No. Not a sextant. <laughs> sextant. <laughs> S E X T A N T.
Uh-oh. Come on, Aggie. Don't explode on me here. I've only got five minutes left. <laughs> My time! Well, I think I'm happy with this now, but like I think I redrew it like three or four times. So refining. Yeah. As long as you got where you wanted to be in the end. Yep. Can't pleasure in without your measuring device. Can humans be two to five inches tall physically possible? No. 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 Like in D and D, I don't know. Magic is magic, but in physically here, no. Uh, your your veins would get too small. Your little heart would break. Mice yep. are pretty interesting. There's a the thing with like glass frogs, which I think is really cool. Like there's a there's a, a limitation on the size of frogs, and they're like pushing the minimum boundaries for it, because at any smaller in the blood cells wouldn't wouldn't fit. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> it's like yeah. Biology's weird, yo. Yep. And scale is important for most things. Mm-hmm. Life needs things to live. Life also needs things to die. Uh, I mean. Now you're thinking like a druid. Mm. Life doesn't need everything to die. It just needs enough things to die that everything else can eat. Where you place that comma is important in that sentence. <laughs> Life needs things to die, I think is the proper <laughs> proper way, because, yeah. There's some pretty cool people make, like, uh, what are they called? Shoot. Like terrariums? Sealed terrariums? Yeah. Those are pretty neat. Because we, we essentially... Oh, no, I'm not going to get existential. I, I take it back. <laughs> Energy is finite, people. <laughs> Hoard the power while you can. <laughs> I think she needs a flintlock. Why is that? Perfectly balanced, yep. I'm going to make the frog so small that it always sneezes away from cardiac arrest. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it's scary. It's scary how small they are. <laughs> what if so small lungs don't work? It's like, that's not good. What should we do? Uh, book lungs. Let's do that. Let's try that. Blow the air over the top. Just yeah, and just everything becomes crap. Different diffusions. <laughs> yeah. They actually, there was a movie a long, long time ago uh, where they like shrunk a guy down into a submarine and put it in somebody's body. Yeah, I remember that. And like part of the problem, weird. yeah, part of the problem with it was like 
uh, at that size when they shrunk him down. Like, he couldn't breathe oxygen anymore because <laughs> the molecules were too big. And it's just like, so you guys are shrinking the molecules? That's terrifying. <laughs> like, it's all weird. At what point in size does air become a viscous liquid that you can't swim through? I don't know. Ask a beetle. Yep. If you're fine with becoming an AI, there's an argument to hoard all the matter and energy we can till the stars burn out because super cool computing are super good. I suppose so. That is that is a massive time frame you are looking mm -hmm. at, though. Yep. How about we just make things as as efficient as we can while we're while we're here, and then we don't have to wait until then. Super uh, super computers and super cooling is is really interesting. Yeah, it is. Superconductors. Okay, I'm done with this one. I'm gonna move on to the next one. What time is it? One thirty? Yeah, we got time for more. Yeah. Once I played a cleric and it was flavored with just a normal EMT medic. That's nice. I've done that. Yep. It's from the world that would have been isekai. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> I've got disease. Uh, here's some antibacterial stuff. Enjoy. Just like running around spraying uh, hand sanitizer on people. <laughs> <laughs> All you would need to do is compress the empty space in the atoms. Good luck with that, Cosmic. If you can do that, we are in business. It's actually how diamonds are made. You put so much pressure on them that they shift into a lattice structure. And that's as far as you can compress them. <laughs> you can't actually compress the space between diamonds, but if you put enough pressure, they'll rearrange themselves into different... Uh, arrangements but not actually like you need heat you need heat to do that yeah to go yeah. from something to carbon and then didn't once they're they stable like, that's really hard didn't they like 10 years ago find a uh do that and and find a um uh basically a, a harder version of a diamond lattice i mean it's purity essentially what you're doing because normally what they do now is they use like flash compression to create yep. lots of little diamonds but they were trying stuff with water um, because water is uncompressible, incompressible, not compressible. And so they were finding if that if you compress water hard enough, it actually goes, it goes from like from I think from liquid to gas and back to solid. <laughs> um, or no, it goes from, from gas to liquid, then back to solid with enough pressure. And it creates this like super hard diamond style lattice. But it's really, really hard to do and only on small scale. So basically making like super diamond crystal, like ice crystals. Um, and then they melt. So. <laughs> yep. So yeah. You mean a nuke? Because that's how we get a nuke. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what they do. Uh, the Basically, the only difference is that. Um... Carbon can't reach critical mass, but radioactive material can. Yeah. Diamonds have no worth other than industrial and cheap fight me. Yeah, worth is just completely placed on stuff. Like, um, yep. gold... No, it's generally arbitrary. Generally arbitrary. Gold is, is super valuable right now because we use it for computer components. Like, your cell phones have small bits of gold in them. You know, your computers. Super yeah. computers and stuff. And so... Like, that's why gold has value, but, like, those didn't exist until 50 years ago, so gold had no value, period. Why did we yeah. put gold in it? Because everyone agreed it was fine. Diamonds are, yeah, basically worthless. They're just hard. They're one of the most common... Uh, Gemstones. Well, it's just one of the most common uh, minerals in the galaxy in a strange formation. So. Yep. Uh, yeah. Same thing like uh, rubies. Rubies actually should be more valuable than diamonds. Should have been for a long time. Because yeah, they were used was... in watches and stuff, but yeah. But we found we figured out how to synthetically produce them relatively quickly. Yeah, because they were so useful, <laughs> yeah. and now we synthetically create diamonds, and that's why like diamond tipped saw blades are comparatively cheap. If you're buying a diamond from like a jeweler, they're ripping you off. They just are. A hundred percent. So, 
Uh, air molecules and compression. That being said, like, like a, a well-cut diamond is, like, pretty cool. Like, the, the, yes. the process yeah. you go through and, like, the artisan nature of that, that has, that has value. I think that has value. So, diamonds are still pretty hard to get. Big diamonds are hard to get, is the, is the trick. So, really what you're paying for is unique mix. Diamonds were the first NFTs. <laughs> Pretty pretty much. You're you're also paying for the uh, the um, market inflation that happens by from the companies that own all of the diamond mines in the world. Yep. But there's also like because essentially what we're talking about is like paying for something that is useful versus paying for something that is a status symbol. Anything that is a status symbol is worth nothing, and that's the point. Like, yeah. So we say as artists. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I hope people are using my art for stuff. Enjoying things is worthwhile. But at the same time, uh, I hope I'm drawing something that people use. So, uh, da, da, da. I, I, I was a big proponent in college for like industrial design and like the, the necessary for skills to have purpose. And like I got yelled at a lot by a lot of my like fine art friends. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like, oh, I love, I love, uh, who's the guy that draws all the barbershop stuff? Um, Norman Rockwell? Rockwell, yeah. I love Rockwell paintings. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's great. You can decorate everything with that. And I'm like, no, that's selling out. And it's like, yes, this is fine. Uh, I rolled a 12. Hooded lizard man barbarian assassin rogue with a hand axe. I think you've drawn that before, Druid. It sounds familiar. I don't know if that's just like a common uh, common theme. Yeah, I don't know either. Transform. Merge layer down. Where did where did our little goblin barbarian go? Pig. Your art isn't a status symbol until your name starts selling it more than your picture. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's, that's fair. True. Yeah. Yeah, I hope people are buying my art because they enjoy it and they want to like. I want to actually look at it and stuff versus like, uh, like I love I love Banksy's stuff because it's provocative and like it gets people talking about it, which is great. And then when someone tries to buy it for like millions and millions of dollars, it's like, huh? <laughs> it's like I don't I don't think that kind of I think that kind of lost the point, but maybe not because like I think the money is going to Banksy, so it's like that's fine. It, it's definitely cruelly ironic. Yeah, yeah. At the very least. I don't actually own a lot of art. Um, I have I have a few pieces from people I know, and then there are a few pieces that I just, like, I found at, from artists at, like, cons and stuff. I'm like, that's great. I love that. I want to show off your stuff because yeah. I want to share Everything, it. Yeah. all the art I own has either been uh, an art trade uh, or I was working as a model for another artist, mm -hmm. or in exchange for their art. It's the same thing for um, like jewelry. Um, I don't have. I have some jewelry, but like I don't really understand people like going to like Fred Myers and buying it, or like Winco and buying yeah. it. Yeah, it's like it needs to have. It needs to have meaning for me, or I don't. I don't have a urge to wear it. Yeah. And so, like, when people give but, me stuff, that makes a huge difference in my mind. I guarantee that nobody who cares about jewelry is buying it from Fred Myers. Fair. <laughs> but they have a they have a jewelry section. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did anybody ever go to like, Claire's in the mall? I think a whole bunch of people um, got their ears pierced there. I know. Like that in Idaho that was like one of the only places because there weren't many like tattoo places or piercing places. Mm -hmm. The whole whole generation of, of people got their ears pierced at, at Claire's in the mall. And then when I was like twenty ish, uh, I had some friends that were strippers and like that's the only place they shopped <laughs> for any of those stuff. <laughs> I was just like, This is weird. This is weird. The store is for like twelve year olds and strippers. And I'm uncomfortable being here. <laughs> I miss having space to show off auction stuff I get and count with. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Having your own like own space for that is great. 
Hey, the shredding, shredding canvas, yeah. That made a lot of people angry. Uh, I'm ten minutes over. <laughs> Whoops. Oh well. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for a new roll. Um, D twenty me. D twenty. Yeah. Uh, fifteen. Male tiefling, conquest paladin, black sclera with orange eyes. His horns curl back at a sharp angle. Okay. Horned tiefling paladin, conquest paladin. I think if you're going out and getting something commissioned, like that's that's the best way to do it. And so, like, if you want to get jewelry, it's the same thing. Like, find yep. somebody to make you jewelry. That's amazing. I love that. But like, people that like trade in diamonds, it just feels scummy to me. <laughs> yeah, same. Diamonds are not intrinsically valuable. They need effort and time. Maybe that's a better way to say what we were saying earlier. Like, gold and, and diamonds don't have intrinsic value. Like, they they need to be, they need to create, well, have created. Yeah, value. lovingly crafted. Yeah. Reminds me of one thing for tieflings, which is just horn lizzy, lizzy, lizzy. I don't know what that means. <laughs> not in the same section right no that's what i'm saying like don't let your kids shop at claire's just don't do it <laughs> or what the hell is it called there's another one like the, i don't know if the internet it might not even be around anymore um list horn list like what type of horns they have um no this the store basically only sold like Cheap, shitty jewelry and, like, Hello Kitty stuff. That's it. That's all it sold. Uh, I don't know if those still exist anymore or not. But it was the only store in the mall that could pierce somebody's ears. So, like, everybody went there. This was also, like, I don't know, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. <laughs> they had, like... Some teenager piercing everybody's ears with a with a gun, like the yeah. ear piercing gun. Everybody got infected. It was just like, there's got to be a better way, and now there is. There's totally a better way. Go to your piercing shops, people. There was a better way back then too, and it was to it was to make sure that you were being sanitary and pierce your ear yourself with a with a safety pin. Mm. I'm not going to recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I'm saying is I, I know a lot of people who were grossed out by the piercing parlor uh, in our mall and decided to do it themselves and were way less likely, uh, appeared to be way less likely to uh, be, get an infection. Hot topic here. Hired a tattoo artist to pierce ears. Those guns transmit hep C. Yes. <laughs> You're piercing yep. with a gun, the truly American way. Absolutely. I don't remember what else was the prompt for this. I got distracted by the the uh the hooded thing. <laughs> I should probably look up right references for a hooded lizard. Hooded lizard. Ah! That's a pretty great one. It's a pretty great picture. Don't look at me! Can I bite your whole face off? I saw a video on uh, what we know about Dilophosaurus mm -hmm. recently, and it, like, I mean... One, they're tiny, two, they didn't have the acid spit. No, they're way bigger. Or are they bigger? They're big. Yeah, that's right, because, I mean, I remember having a book when I was a kid that, like, they would fight larger, uh, like, Allosaurus-type things. Yeah. Yeah, they're big and 
This is when you made Probably it. aggressive, it. yeah. They did not have the frill and almost definitely did not spit poison. There are two types of tieflings that are called Grimspawn that have undead like features rather than devil horns. Eh, okay. Imagine if you actually went a lizard with a cloak and a hood. Yeah. You should have been more specific. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just made it look like he has an umbrella for a head. I can do better. I can do better. We're going to do better. Let's start this over. I like the tiny little body. I kind of want to give him, like, have him uh, T-posing. T-posing to assert dominance. Fight me. I'll give him his little axe. I like his little eyes being really far apart, but You were bigger than most raptors. Mm, cool. Raptors are actually kind of small, right? Except for the Utah raptor. Yeah. We thought they were frills, but were actually just leftover vestigial fins as evolutionary leftovers. Interesting. If we were on Twitch right now, I would be posting the Kermit poppet. Oh, I need to get the Kermit. I need to get YouTube to have all the uh, all the emotes. Maybe I'll work on that this week. I forgot about the Kermit Poppets. <laughs> One of my best and most underrated jokes. If you haven't seen the Poppet video, I recommend it. It's good. Same. I'm still having fun playing Helldivers, <laughs> but we're definitely yeah. we're definitely past the like honeymoon phase, where now uh -huh. my friends and I are like complaining about everything, <laughs> uh, and it's it's still fun. It's still fun even though we're complaining about everything. It's great. My friend tried to save me last night, and then like I got swarmed by bugs, and I just like bam 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 bam, and then whipped out my sidearm and like bam 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 bam, and just like one shot a whole bunch of bugs. I'm like I'm a badass. And my friend just shoots me in the face. He's like, sorry, ah. I was trying to help. I'm like, I had it covered. <laughs> ah. Ah. That's just how the game works. It was really funny. But I had like, I had half a second of being like, I am unstoppable. And then instant death. So. that that's I think that's a good place to be. I I agree. I, I really feel like that's, that should be the ultimate place where where that game specifically ends up. Yeah. I feel like a frilled lizard would be a really good uh, a really good cult leader. I was thinking like cult of the lamb, but you're a frilled lizard. Just like puff up and give a give a <laughs> give the the sermon. Come, fellow believers. Lord Dremetrodon will rise again. <laughs> Just like a frilled lizard worshipping a dinosaur fossil. <laughs> the great progenitor <laughs> mother of all 
His teeth could destroy the world. If only he'd close his... Oh, I can't think of the word. Trisnaptus? Like, dinosaurs have weird nasal bones. He, yeah. And so do birds. Because birds are dinosaurs. Yes. Fight me! Alright. Heard about snake handlers, but lizards is on a different level. I know a lot of people that had lizards. I had a, a neighbor growing up who uh, who had a uh, an iguana that was it was an old and nasty sucker mm -hmm. thing. The thing was fully five feet long, uh, long from snoot to to boot. Nice. And uh, oof, it was aggressive with that whippy tail. I caught a lizard once, and I kept it for like a year. And I fed it crickets and stuff. And then it died. Which, you know, that happens. Yep. And uh, I just put it outside. Because <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this lizard. I don't want to bury it or anything. And it, it just uh, it just stayed there. And then after like three years, it, there was just a lizard skeleton outside <laughs> my house. <laughs> and I was like, alright. Nobody wants to eat this lizard for some reason. Deserts are weird. I miss my scaly babies. I had a monitor that was basically a cat. Nice. What have I owned in uh, my life? I had a. Uh, I've had I've had cats. I had a turtle. I had a turtle. I had a lizard. I had a bird. I had gerbils. I had some mice. My sister had a hamster. A hamster was a pain in the ass. It's just not a happy hamster. My sister had guinea pigs. Ooh, guinea they pigs. ate their babies routinely. Mm -hmm. That'll happen. I had, I had this turtle, and we had a whole bunch of little like pencil fish. Uh huh. And like once or twice a year, all of the pencil fish would spawn, and there would just be this huge explosion of fish, mm -hmm. and then my turtle would eat them. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd like he'd let the population grow really really big and then he'd just like nom 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 until there was just like three or four left and then he'd leave them alone <laughs> until they had more fish. It was awful. Wow. He was a druid. Yep. He knew how it, he knew how it worked. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I zoom. I zoomed out and saw the, the googly eyes. Fight me! I really want a like taunt mechanic in Pathfinder and D and D. There are some, but they're a little, little heavy-handed. Yeah. Paladin has I've a been, few options. Yeah, I've been thinking about that for the the uh, TTRPG system I've been playing with designing. Oh yeah. And I've I think I've figured out a system that I like for it. But I really just I, I feel like it should be it should be part of the intimidation um yeah yeah i agree like that's, that should be kind of how i thought about it yeah an option with the intimidation rolls like i want to try to intimidate this person and if i succeed they have to attack me or at least if they attack somebody they have to attack me like yeah like i feel like that should just be kind of baked into it the intimidation yeah. thing i've i've been thinking about it as tying it to intimidation um but like I've also been thinking about it um, as as being basically like the the mental version of of combat maneuvers from first edition yeah, Pathfinder. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm gonna be done with this lizard. I don't know what else to do with him. It is almost two o'clock. I don't know if I should. Yeah. I don't know if I should do another one or not. You're still working, so I think I will. I'll do one more. It'll probably be kind of goofy. 
a total wizard who, if caught in a house fire, would place safety of her books over herself. All right, a total wizard that loves books more than life. I don't know how to draw that. Just, just draw a total wizard reading a book. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck that book. <laughs> <laughs> No, as a as a person who loves books, you don't you don't actually want to fuck the books. You just want <laughs> books that make that make you feel like you want to fuck. It's just all romance novels. Yeah. So You're distressed all portal them. wizard quickly shuffling books away, maybe from a fire. Yeah, that's that's a whole scene. That's a which whole is scene. against the rules. It's too much. Take too long. Shell shelves. Yeah, that would be good. A book about tentacles. Love it. You know, chat, sometimes I don't know if you're the best or the worst. But also you have the same energy as me, so I usually... I usually think you're the best. I like this song. Uh, it's a book of the lusty Argonian maid. <laughs> what is that from? Is that from Skyrim? That's, that's from Skyrim, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Once you go wolves, you can't go back to regular doggos. Feels weird, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that's bad. That's a bad sentence. <laughs> Chat's getting a little spicy that I can't read it on YouTube. We need the we need the horny bunk. Yep. Chat, you're on notice. Ban yourselves, all of you, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't draw impaled ferrets, and you guys need to cool your uh, jets for a, for a minute. One of these days, we'll do a spicy, spicy viewer suggestion. <laughs> but we'll have to do it on, like, Picardo. Yeah. And it'll have to be like fully funded. <laughs> Just like Rook After Dark for all your dragons blinking cars needs. Yep. Drawing turtles is hard. Yeah, they they got some uh You know what turtles don't do in real life? Stand on two legs. Yep. They're, they are super not built for it. No. The wolf comment had nothing to do with being horny. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I don't believe you. <laughs> That's fair, yeah. No shade. Yeah, I think we're gonna try this again. I like the weird head shape I've drawn, but I don't like the shell shape. So, impaled in what way? You guys have to go back and watch the video, I guess. It's it's in the Discord and draw. Yeah, I I got rook demonetized. <laughs> is what happened? That is what happened. And I am ashamed. It's all right. Let's talk about the pet I had to put down this year. I'm sorry to hear that, Gamma. Oh. You just said it right when everyone was being uh, inappropriate. 
This is why you need a horny bunk. Yep. Actually, I think it might exist in the Discord. Yeah, I think it's. I think it is on the the soundboard in the Discord. I actually don't know how to but get I, to the soundboard in Discord. Is it this neither one? do I. There we go. Which is the reason why I I said y'all get the horny bonk instead of instead of finding it. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> Skittles got it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be a member of Blue Skittles Discord, though. I have said it before. You got to remember, YouTube's on a delay. That's true. Step one: get voice mod. Yeah. Every total has Godzilla stance. Yeah, I mean you have to. Yeah. When you're when you're built that way, and you you go bipedal, you. you Everything looks like a kaiju. It's just the nature of the beast. Books. So many books. My only problem with the uh, bookshelves on the shell is that... Uh, how would they get to them? Yeah, they, they the hurdles are hurdles are not exactly um flexible. Yeah, they like to draw turtles with like tons of shit on their back, but like, uh, you can't take your shell off, like you can't a backpack. So, Oh, you mean the ferret? Yeah, yeah, we're talking about the ferret. No, oh. yeah, yeah. Give him a reachy claw thing with a grippy stick. I guess they might uh, be able to uh. look at their own back if they stretch their neck out. So that could work. Could also just have book bags instead of bookshelves. Turtles IRL generally move so slow and are so strong that they don't really need to worry too much about carry weight. Yeah. I love seeing those like tortoises when things like ride them. Yeah. I got I got told a story of a um, of a tortoise um, like accidentally getting wedged underneath a Volkswagen like an old Volkswagen Beetle, mm -hmm. and then just like struggling and it moved more slowly, but it actually managed to like push uh, the whole Volkswagen Beetle up <laughs> and, and move it around a little bit before I don't, I don't believe that but... <laughs> sliding out. I'm not sure I believe it either, but like it's a fun mental image. Yeah. Those things didn't weigh much. No, no. Um, but still, like, that's still, I think, five or 600 pounds you'd have to be able to lift to. Because, like, I, I could, when I was younger, you could grab a Volkswagen Beetle by the by the, the bumper and, like, uh -huh. shuffle it a little bit. You could, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you had two or three guys, you could pick them up and move them. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say three or four. Let's say three or four. But Player carries, but it's just books. Plate carrier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've seen tur turtles book it. Yeah, my turtle was really fast when he wanted to. He just bap, 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 bap. But I think I think the big like turtles are slow thing is because like the land tortoises that exist uh, exist because they're so slow. Like they yeah, they just yeah. conserve a lot of energy and don't don't move much because they're desert creatures. But yeah, same thing with, uh, and then when you look at, like, sea tortoises and sea yep. turtles. Sea turtles, yeah. They, they just, they only come on land to lay eggs, and they look real stupid when they do it. So, two examples yeah, of slow are, turtles. They are not built for, for 
land locomotion. Nope. One of these days, they're going to figure out how to, to lay their eggs safely underwater, and it's going to save their species. Either that or they're never going to learn that, and we're going to lose them. Through the plastic. <laughs> because of the plastic. Once overlaid a video of mass turtle egg laying on a beach with the sound of Normandy. <laughs> mm, I mean, that feels that feels accurate. Everything that lives on a beach wants to eat turtle eggs. Makes me think of uh, like the tier zoo tier or tier, whatever the hell's called. Tier zoo. Tier zoo videos. Yeah. Yeah. Pack, yeah. Pack, 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 with the health bars. I feel like I need like stacks of books. Just like strapped. What a stupid idea. I better do it though. <laughs> Do, yeah, do what makes you feel happy. I'm uh, just noodling now so I can end any time or I can keep going for another three hours. <laughs> Probably. Does anybody know what was up with the old cartoons when like kids would have their school book like wrapped with a belt. Is that the yeah, original, I'm not, original Trapper Keeper? I think so, but I'm not sure. That might just be like really old school, poor rural America. Could be. Bookstraps are actually pretty bespoke made and in some areas were seen as a symbol of class and status. Hmm. Weird. It always looked to me like it was literally just a belt wrapped around the books.
I think I'm going to call it. All right. Cool. I think that is it. Thank you, everybody, for your suggestions today. Drew, thanks for drawing with me again. Yeah. I had fun. Hopefully, we'll be back on Friday. Never know these days, but hopefully, we'll be back on Friday. If we are, we'll keep using the same list. If not, we'll be back next week. And uh, we'll go from there. So, thanks again, everyone. Uh, I don't know if I have anybody to raid right now. Let's take a look. I still managed to get one full color in. <laughs> nice. All right. Nope, we're just going to call it. Thanks again, everybody. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Keep your dust on the table. We'll see you on Friday or next week. Have a wonderful time. Bye. Bye.